Hey, number crunchers, good to be back with you. It's been a while since I've done a statics or strength of materials problem, so I figured it's time for another one. And I pulled this one up. Now I have to confess, I don't know where this came from. All I did was type in uh, strength of materials homework problem into Google, and that's what showed up. So if it's that high up in the list, it must be something people care about. Let's solve this one. I like this one a lot because it's got oh, there's a lot of information in it. It takes a while to solve. This is going to be kind of a long-ish video, so obviously scroll ahead to whatever you need. And this one is, is almost as much of a bookkeeping problem as it is anything else. Um, there's three different sides to this three-bar truss. There's three different angles. There are an external force and there are a bunch of reaction forces. So it's going to be important for us to keep track of all the different uh, in pieces of information we're trying to track. Now we have to find something. So we're going to find the forces in A, B, and C. Now the way I've got this label, the points have capital letters A, B. Now C, big C and little c look a lot alike, so I put that extra little mark on the big C to, to uh, distinguish it from the little c. So A, B, and, or, I'm sorry, A, B, and C, little c, are the forces in the elements and then alpha, beta, and gamma are the angles. Well, A, B, and C are the first three letters in the Latin alphabet. Alpha, beta, and gamma are the first three letters in the Greek alphabet. So that's how I picked those. Okay, we've got one force. We've got a 28,000 Newton external force, and we've got some uh, dimensions there. Now the other, other thing that's interesting is we've got that right there and that right there. Those are our boundary conditions. We have to have boundary conditions so we know what it is we're trying to, uh, how to solve for things. And this one is pinned, and this one is pinned in, in that direction, but it's free in that direction. That's what that roller means. So this one can rotate, but it can't move in the x and y direction. This is going to have reaction forces in x and y. This one is going to have reaction forces only in x, not in y. Okay, with all this information in one place, how are we going to keep track of this? Well, the way we're going to do this is we're going to remember the process that we use for solving these kinds of problems. And it always consists of the same four things. Number one, you need a working diagram that has all your information on it. That's our working diagram. Number two, you need a free body diagram that, has, that isolates only the information you need and shows forces. We've only got one force on this. We don't have any of those other forces. So this is not a free body diagram. We're going to draw that next. Number three, you write out equations of equilibrium. Since this is a 2D problem, we only get three equations of equilibrium. We get some of the forces in the x is zero, some of the forces in y is zero, and some of the moments are zero. So those are going to be our three possible equations of equilibrium. We won't need every one of those at every step. And the last thing is when you, after you write out your equations of equilibrium, you solve for something. And the whole point is to solve for those three numbers. The force in that element, force in that element, and the force in that element. Now, because I worked this problem before, and also because I'm, I'm pretty good at uh, guessing these things by now, ought to be, um, I'm going to guess that's in compression, that's in tension, and that's in tension. Now, if my guesses are correct, the forces I will calculate for A, B, and C are going to be positive. If I'm wrong, they'll come out negative. So if I'm guessing tension and it's actually in compression, the number comes out negative, and we, we'll just note, note that. Whew, all right, first thing we're going to need is we're going to need to solve for reaction forces. So let's do that first. Let's label this. Now, it's going to take a little while to label this and to draw all my uh, uh, diagrams out correctly. It's better to do it this way, better to take the time and do this correctly up front because if you don't and you make a mistake now you've got to go back through all your messy calculations and try to find it. I know because I did it on this problem. I don't. I got the problem off the web. I don't have any idea what the answer was like I do now but I didn't. And so I thought well I better start double checking everything before I make a video about it and start hearing from you guys when I make a mistake. So I kept doing checks and the checks weren't working out. Well, the problem was I had one of these, I forgot which one now, but I had one of those dimensions wrong. And in doing that, of course, it, it propagated down through the, uh, uh, my calculations. And because I was in kind of a hurry, I kind of ripped it out on, on some uh, scrap paper. I couldn't find it. I did exactly what I'm telling you not to do, okay? And so you can believe me now because I'm reminding myself that it's wrong. So anyway, let's get going here. 
let's draw just this. For the time being, we don't need to know what in, well that was terrible. There, there we go. So for the time being, I don't really care what the, the forces in the elements are. I only care what the reaction forces are. So I'm going to draw this as just a, a rigid triangle. I know it's not, but for right now, I'm going to just draw it that way. So this is F, and that's 28,000 newtons. Okay? Now, that's A. So I'm going to guess that this is in tension. I'm going to guess that's my reaction force A sub X. That's my reaction force A sub Y. And I'm going to guess that that's my reaction force C sub X. Now this is, okay, that's capital C. That's the, uh, the force acting at that point. So that's a free body diagram. So remember the process. Working diagram, free body diagram. The next one is equations of equilibrium. Well, let's, let's start here. Let's sum the forces in the X direction. Oops. And those all have to be zero. So I know that, let's see, minus, well, I'm really messing this up today, aren't I? Minus AX plus CX equals zero. So I know that AX equals CX when I, when I finally get that far. Okay, um, let's see, what else can I do here? Let's sum the forces in the y direction, those are going to be zero, so I know that a y minus f also equals zero, so a y equals f, and I know that, we're going to run out of room here, no, I'm good. So I know that a y is going to be 28,000 newtons. Okay? And you can kind of guess looking at this, that's the only vertical force, so that force has to be countered by that one right there. All right, so I've got one number. All right, I know that's 28,000 newtons. Okay, so I got one. And I know that these two are equal to each other. If I can find either one of them, I'll know the other one. Well, how am I going to do that? Let's sum the moments. Now, I only get to sum the moments once, so I've got to make this count. Let's sum the moments about A, because that, then the um, the distance acting on, the, the or AX and AY acting on, is going to be zero, so I'm, CX is going to be the only thing I don't know. All right, well let's see, that one is going to be 0 0.75 times F. Now is it positive or negative? Well, it's at, the force is going this way, it's acting in a counter, in a clockwise direction, that's opposite my positive sign convention. So that's going to be a negative right there. And this one right there is going to be making a moment in the counterclockwise direction that agrees with my positive sign convention. So I get, let's see, 1.4 meters times look, 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 CX. And that's capital CX, okay? Now, I've got my, my cheat sheet here. I, I worked this all out in MathCAD. And I also worked it out on graph paper, so I think I'm pretty sure I got this right. So I've got one equation. It's going to equal zero, so it's an equation. Now, what don't I know? Well, I know what that is. I know what that is. I know what that is. I don't know what that is. One equation, one unknown. I should be in good shape here. So CX is going to be 0 0.75 meters times 28,000 newtons over 1.4 meters. And if I got that right, that turns out to be 15,000 newtons. Can you see that? Yes, you can. Okay, so I'll get my cheat sheet out of the way here. Got that, got that. So this is 15,000 newtons. And that means this is 15,000 newtons. Okay? All right, with that done, I'm going to erase this part of the board, and we're going to start solving for little a, little b, and little c, the forces and the elements. Okay? Okay, got my board erased. Let's start up here on point a, and we're going to solve for the forces in element c and element b. All right? So let's, let's do point a here. 
And one of the things I do sometimes is I'll draw a circle around that just to show that that's a point. And it looks kind of like a point. So remember, remember what the uh, process is. We've still got our working diagram. We're about to draw another free body diagram. We're going to write some more equations of equilibrium, and we're going to solve for some stuff. We're going to solve for force in B and force in C. So let's do that. Let's draw the free body diagram first. There's my point, and there's AY. Now there's AX. We figured that out. All right, now B is going to go down. I'm guessing B is probably in tension, so I'm going to draw it that way. C, I'm going to guess, is also in tension, so it goes that way. All right? Got a problem here. That doesn't line up with the coordinate system, and if I'm going to write out equations of equilibrium in the x and the y direction, the forces got to be in the x and y direction. Well, they're not. Let's fix this. That's going to be the component of c, oops, not the c direction, the x direction, and that's going to be the component of c in the y direction. So, how do we do that? Let's draw a force triangle here. That's usually a good idea in these, in these situations. If that's C, this must be CX, and that must be CY. I'm guessing that component and that component add up to that one, and that's alpha. Darn, I need to know what alpha is too. Okay, well hang on, that's a force triangle. In order to find this, i got to find alpha, so let's just draw a regular triangle, triangle, geometry, I guess, whoops, getting a lot of errors here when I draw, there we go, that looks better, okay, so, this is 0 0.75 meters, and I'll get my head out of your way here in a second, there's 0 0.4 meters, and if you work it out, that's 0 0.85 meters, if you do the Pythagorean theorem, that comes out there, there's 90 degrees there, and there's alpha there. I don't know what this is, but I don't need to know what that is. It doesn't matter what that is. Now let's see. If I look at this, I can say that tangent alpha is going to be the opposite over the adjacent. So that's 0 0.75 meters over 0 0.4 meters. And so that's going to work out that alpha is 61.9275 degrees. Okay. So I got that. Now I know what that is. Now I can figure out what these are. Again, got a little board here, so I'm going to erase this. Okay. Now let's see. Let's go to the definition of a sine. Well, that's opposite over hypotenuse. So that means sine alpha equals Cx over C. And that means Cx is C sine alpha. Okay, now I'm getting somewhere. And by the same logic, Cy is adjacent over hypotenuse. Cy is going to be C cosine alpha. Does that look right? Yeah, it's cosine. Yeah, it looks right. Okay, so now I got those. Again, little board. I'm going to erase some of the stuff. There you go. Take a screenshot. Do whatever you need to do there. That's fine. Okay, so that is going to be C sine alpha, and that's going to be C cosine alpha. Okay, and these are and these are little C's. Remember, the big C has that little little extra mark on it there. I'm not sure what that's called? Little dingus, whatever you call that thing. Um, so let's we've got the free body diagram now. Remember. Working diagram, free body diagram, equations of equilibrium. So that's what we're going to do next. And let's start with uh, let's start with x. Doesn't really matter in this case. Do it do it in whichever order you want. So minus a x minus since it goes opposite my positive sine convention, plus c sine alpha and that has to equal zero. So I know that c is going to be a x over sine alpha, and that works out to, I think it works out to 17,000, it does, 17,000 newtons. Okay, so I actually know what that is now, and I know that's in tension. 
That's really important. I, I assume that this was intention. The number came out positive. That means I was correct in my assumption. So that's intention. So this fails. It's going to be. It's going to fail intention. It's going to be just stresses force divided by cross sectional area. This one, if it really is in compression, I think it is. I think we'll find that. If it's going to fail, that one's going to fail in buckling. So we'll have to work that out later. So anyway, there's the sum of the forces in the x direction. Now let's do the sum of the forces in the y direction. Okay. I only get three equations of equilibrium. Sum of the forces in the x direction, sum of the forces in the y direction, and sum of the moments. All those have to be zero. All right, so AY, I know we know that one, that's 28,000, minus B minus CY, which is C cosine theta, or cosine alpha. Man, I'm having trouble here. Cos, dang it. cosine alpha, and that all has to be zero. Well, we already know what C is. We figured it out here. So that's the one we're going to solve for. So B is going to be AY minus C cosine alpha. And that's going to be, let's see, what do we say? That was 28,000. Twenty-eight thousand newtons minus seventeen thousand newtons, because that's what C was, times cosine of sixty-one point. Uh, let me do that again. Nine two seven five degrees. Nine two seven five degrees. I'll get out of your way here. All right, we can see that down there. All right, good. So B is going to be twenty thousand newtons. All right, so now I know this one's 20,000. Last thing I need to know is A. All right, well, there's a couple of ways I could do this. I could do the free body diagram at B if I wanted, or I could do it at C if I wanted. Uh, looks to me like there's probably less going on at C. Let's go there. All right, so there's this done. I only need one more. And let's see, do point C. And there's that, that circle around there to indicate that's a point. All right, let's draw the free body diagram around point C. There's the point. Okay, I already know that uh, there is C, that's big C, in the x direction. That's a reaction force. All right, I know that there is B. B is in tension, so S is going up. Now, it's pretty obvious this is the force in A is going to have to go that way because I need a vertical force down to uh, cancel that out, and I need a horizontal force to the left to cancel that out. So let's do this. That's got to be A. Same problem we had before. Those uh, don't line up with the A doesn't line up with the coordinate system, so we can fix that. All right, so that is going to be A in the X direction, and that's going to be A in the Y direction. This is looking pretty easy, okay? This isn't going to be too hard to figure out. All right, so same problem we had last time. Let's go ahead and calculate, oops, that's, I can do better. Let's calculate gamma. Again, gamma is just the third letter in the alphabet, so it corresponds with C. So there's A. No. <coughs> so let's see. That's going to be 1.4 meters minus 1, so that's 1 meter. That is going to be 0 0.75 meters. So I know that tangent of gamma equals 0 0.75 meters divided by 1 meter. And that means gamma is 36.8699 degrees. We'd probably call it 87 and get away with it. So there we go. There's my uh, geometry triangle. Let's go ahead and do the force triangle now. I had, oops, make that a slightly different angle. There we go. There's A, 
So there's going to be a y, and there's going to be a x, and there's gamma. Okay, because this line is parallel to that line. If that's gamma, so is that. All right, that's that's what I'm doing here. So let's see, a y over a is going to be cosine gamma. That means a y is a cosine gamma, and that means AX is going to be A sine gamma. All right, so there we go. We got all our all the, the, the background stuff done here. Um, again, there, take your screenshot, do whatever you got to do, and I'm going to erase this, and we're going to uh, figure out our equations of equilibrium here, and we're going to solve for something. <coughs> okay, well, let's see. There's only two things we can do. We can sum the forces in the x direction or sum the forces in the y direction. It doesn't really matter. Let's solve the forces in the x direction. So that means that Cx, and that's my reaction force, it's capital C, minus Ax has to be zero. Well, duh, those two things have to cancel out or the forces aren't zero. So Ax equals capital Cx. And we knew that capital Cx was 15,000. Okay, that was over there. So uh, that's AX. Now let's see. AX is A sine gamma, right? So A is AX over sine gamma. And for A, I get 25,000 newtons, all right? Now, just to check, let's put that there, just to check, if I got that right, forces in the B direction, or the Y direction should cancel out as well, right? Well, it seems to me, throwing away a chance to check your answers, probably not a good idea, okay? I don't want to try to make my career on partial credit, okay? When you drop a bridge in the water, or you sink a ship, or you knock a building over, or crash a plane, you don't get partial credit. So let's try this. B minus A Y, and that has to equal zero. So B is going to be A cosine gamma, all right? B over cosine gamma has got to equal A, and that works out to, let's see, cosine gamma, that's going to be, uh, what's B? 20,000 over cosine 36.8699 degrees, and that also turns out to be 25,000 newtons. So it worked. So there you've got it. We've got all the reaction forces, and because we've got all the reaction forces, we now know what the forces in all three of those elements are. If you want to figure out whether they're going to fail, take that number divided by the cross-sectional area of C. If it's less than your allowable stress, you're good to go. Same here. This one's going to come, going to fail in buckling, so you actually have to run the buckling equation on this one. In order to do that, you're going to need some information about the cross-sectional shape and some things like that. So there you go. A lot of detail here, kind of a long video. Hope this helps, and we'll talk to you next time.